like to call the May 24th, 2017 Piqua City Schools Board of Education meeting to order. Mr. Hiddle, please call the roll. Mr. Ford. Here. Mr. Patrizio. Here. Mrs. McMacken. Here. Mr. Bostic. Here. Mr. Height. Here. Would you please stand and join me with the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's nice to see so many people here. We'll try to keep it under three hours. <laughs> okay, you've uh, had a chance to review the agenda for uh, tonight's meeting. Are there any changes? No. There's no changes to the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You've also seen the minutes from the April 26th, 2018 meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Okay, if not, may we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. I have a motion to have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Legislative report, Mr. Patrizio. We have a lot of people here tonight, so I'll pass. <laughs> we have a lot on the agenda. Okay. Upper Valley report is very easy. We've got a lot of students. If you look at the paper, we've got a lot of students that have done very well on state and national uh, competitions this year. And we have some students up for national recognition as well as staff members up for re national recognition this year. So things are going well at the Career Center. And next year we're set to have over a thousand kids on on campus next year. So that'll be good. All right, and I have nothing on here to the public on agenda items. Moving along to the treasurer's report, Mr. Uh, Thompson. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to speak real quick before um, Jeremy gets started. Um, one of the things that we continue to be very proud of is our financial um, um, ability to to do really good um, bookkeeping and good accounting. Um, we continue to get really good recognition from all levels, from our audits at the state and so on. And um, this evening, we have Joe Braden here from the Auditor of State Office who's here to present our Treasurer's Office with the Ohio Auditor of State Award with distinction. So I'd like to turn it over to him really quick before uh, Mr. Hiddle gets into his Treasurer's Report. All right, sounds great. Well, it's my honor to be here tonight uh, again to uh, present the Auditor of State Awards um, to the Pickwell City School District. Um, it's important to note that this puts the district in a very select group. The Auditor State's Office audits nearly 5,900 entities and only 3 to 5 percent are even eligible for this award. The Auditor State Award with distinction is presented to local governments and school districts upon the completion of financial audit that meet the following criteria. So I'm going to read through this criteria of a clean audit report so you know what Jeremy and, and his staff went through. So bear with me real, real quick. Uh, the first thing you must do is complete a, uh, a CAFR, which is a comprehensive annual financial report within six months of fiscal year in, have a clean audit with no funding for recovery, no material citations or material weaknesses, no significant deficiencies, single audit findings, or any question costs, and have no other financial concerns. The management letter must contain no comments related to any <coughs> ethics referrals, any question costs, thousand dollars any lack of timely report submissions reconciliation issues failure to obtain a timely single audit findings for recoveries or any public meetings or public records issues this award represents every school employee here that strives each day to achieve accounting excellence and I also want to recommend or recognize the board members the board of education members here for their um, Excellent job they've done accounting for all the dollars here in the, in the school district. And I specifically want to recognize Jeremy Hiddle, the treasurer. Come on up here, Jeremy, for his outstanding leadership, his professionalism, and his commitment to fiscal integrity. Congratulations. On behalf of Otter State Dave Yost, I'd like to present the Otter State Award with distinction. So, Thank you, you very much. You're welcome. So,
Thank you, Joe. You're welcome to you're welcome to go ahead and leave. Thank you for coming, and congratulations, Mr. Hiddle, to you and your team. Congratulations. Please uh, take a few minutes and pass on to your staff the board's appreciation for your work as well. Please. Will do. And uh, okay, five-year forecast. Sure. I see you point. Okay. I always try to pick a theme, and so the theme uh, for this five five-year forecast, May two thousand eighteen, is is our finances are stable. And that's always good news, uh, considering uh, there's plenty of school districts in the state of Ohio who can't say the same thing. So we're in a good place here in Pippa City Schools. Flying through. So three things that I want to talk about tonight is stable local and state funding. Our expenses are on track, and then uh, it is going to be election season in November, and we're going to end up with a new governor. And so that always leaves uncertainty as to what happens to the um, the uh, uh, funding formula from the state. So uh, we've been bene benefits, uh, we've been beneficiaries of the um, new uh, fun funding formulas that we received, but you never know what you might get. I always like to point out sort of where the general fund revenue comes from, and the biggest chunk of that money does come from the state foundation uh, payments that we receive. So our state funding is always important because as that changes, so do our finances. So that's, that's the reason why I like putting that up there, just as a reminder that uh, the biggest portion of our money still does come from the state, even though uh, it's pretty much close to a 50-50 split. We talk about valuations. Normally I come to the board and I tell you all that we are um, seeing decreases in our valuation for property values. And um, finally, we've gotten some stabilization to occur and actually have seen a little bit of an increase in that. And so I projected that our property tax revenue is going to remain stable through FY18, the remainder of it in FY19. We do have a triennial appraisal that comes up in 2019 just to keep in mind, because as homes are moving quickly and prices are on the rise, that could lead to a higher valuation, but the way the funding formula works, it could end up that we would receive less state funding because our district looks like it's more wealthy than other districts. So. It's just something to keep in mind. It's sort of a double-edged sword. As things improve, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to end up with more money. You could actually see your state funding decrease. Additional state revenue, our income tax revenue, has rebounded as the economy has rebounded. We expect income tax revenues to remain stable for the remainder um, of the five-year forecast. And um, state funding has returned to 2007 levels. So just keep that in mind. We're finally back to where we were. Um, after the, the financial hiccups that we, we went through. So, and again, as I discussed, you know, the unknown future, they, they like to change this around all the time because politicians know best on what to do uh, when it comes to funding school districts. So we don't, we don't really know what we're gonna get. So we'll, we'll see how that ends up. So as things have been great up until now, this forecast could be useless when I come back to talk to you in May um, next year because by that point we'll know what's going to be happening or very close to knowing what's going to be happening so just to keep that in mind so when we talk about expenses again with the blue and the red the blue is the salaries the red is the benefits so when you look at that we try to keep that um, that piece of the pie in about the 75 percent range close to 80 percent somewhere in that vicinity and you can see that we're we're really at the about the three quarters mark and then the uh, purchase services go after that, and that's a lot of our um, Miami County ESC, Montgomery County ESC, our special ed services, those kind of things, as well as our utility bills, those kind of things. Good news is our expenditures have been on track. We've completed 10 years in the black, and we're on, our, uh, on track to complete year 11, and it's nice that uh, Jeff Price is in the audience tonight because, again, as I mentioned many times, uh, we wouldn't be where we are without him. Um, he has... Uh, definitely set the, the tone for the district, and uh, I'm just trying to maintain maintain the, the way we do things. Uh, expenses have stayed in line with projections, and um, we continue to look for ways to do more with less while still continuing to offer the best education uh, that you can get here at Pickwick City Schools. This chart up here just sort of shows our overall uh, cash balance uh, projection and where we've been at through the, through the months and through the years. And um, we continue to remain to have healthy balance 
to be able to, when uh, something goes astray, like a new governor, for example, um, that we're going to be able to um, weather the storm until the next time it comes around when we, we see good days. So we're sitting in a good position, um, and uh, it's, just, it's a good thing to have, uh, and a lot of people wish they were us. Bottom line is, is that our finances are stable. We've completed 10 years in the black, and we intend to continue this tradition as long as possible without affecting our classroom instruction. And um, we still use our taxpayer bill of rights to, uh, to look back at when we make any kind of financial decisions for the district. So we continue looking out for the taxpayer and keep that in mind. I, I always remember that every morning when I wake up that I'm actually paid to come here and protect taxpayer money. Um, and, um, and then I have my counterparts who are here to make sure we educate our kids. So that's, that's why we have those checks and balances in place. So um, if you've got any questions, my contact information is up there. And I'm always willing to answer questions. That's all I've got. Okay, thank you. I'm going to go on with the treasurer's report, or the treasurer's agenda, rather. Sure. You all received the April financial reports. Were there any questions on those? I also have the fund to fund transfers um, in there this evening. Uh, one is to move the, the revenue that we had uh, remaining from the construction project to the PI account that was approved by the, the county auditor's office, as well as the uh, fund to fund transfer for um, our HVAC payment for the, the high school HVAC system from the PI fund. And then the approval of the five year forecast. Those are the things on the agenda tonight. Okay. Are there any other questions from Jeremy at this point? Jeremy, on the, um, the assumption sheet, uh -huh. the casino part of that, if a school district get if a school district gets money from the casino tax, whatever, does the state then withhold that same amount that they would have given a school district, or does the school district get get both? It's a supplemental payment in addition to the the funding formula. So it, it it's a it's it's fifty five dollars a student or so, depending on what year it is um, that we get. So it, it's separate. It doesn't go into the formula and, and lower the amount. We're still at the cap. So we haven't received all the money uh, from the state also. In addition, I guess, since we're talking about that, we, we are still at the cap and um, will be so next year as well for our funding formula. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other questions, do we have a motion to approve the treasurer's agenda? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? On this, Mr. Hiddle, please call the roll. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Patrizio. Aye. Mr. Height. Aye. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, Superintendent Report, Mr. Thompson. Okay, um, we're going to go um, ahead and introduce our valedictorians and students. I'm going to call um, Beth Rosencrantz, our senior guidance counselor, to come forward, and she's going to introduce our um, young students that received that um, distinction this year and um, talk a little bit about um, how they got to this point. Are you still calculating there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> we stopped that at semester, and we're done with that part. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, do you want them to come up sure. as I introduce Absolutely. them? So first up is Darby Bupp. Come on up. Darby is the daughter of Maria and Bradley Bupp. She is the president of National Honor Society and Interact Club, as well as a soprano section leader and dance captain of the company. Darby is also an active member of many other clubs, such as Key Club, Student Council, and Spanish Club. She volunteers annually at Ohio Special Olympics, mentors at Spring Creek Elementary and Piqua Central Intermediate Schools, volunteers at the Center for Neurological Development in Burkittsville, and coordinates and works the school blood drives. Darby attended the Buckeye Girls State Conference after her junior year, as well as the Hobie Conference after her sophomore year. She is a four-time recipient of the Top 100 Award, winner of the 2017 Rotary Four-Way Speech Contest, and awardee of the Jeff Zimmerman Spirit Award. Darby, Darby is also extremely involved in the Youth and Government Program, where she was elected the 2017 and 18 Congresses on National Affairs in North Carolina. She plans on attending Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., where she will study government with aspirations to become a constitutional lawyer. This is Darby. Hi, 
Um, I have been going to Pickwick schools for about six years now. And I think the truly special thing about Pickwick City School Districts um, is just the variability among all of my classmates. Um, I think that it's really unique that in terms of ideology, race, um, sexuality, a whole different sorts of things. Um, there's just really a lot of variability and there are really a lot of different people that go to Pickwa schools and I think that that kind of fosters a lot of different qualities within us that aren't really appreciated today in society like humility and acceptance and I think that those things are really important and it's really great that Pickwa City Schools recognizes those. Uh, the next student I, we would like to recognize is Cameron Brown. Come on up. Cameron Brown is one of Kimberly and Clayton Brown's three children. He is a valedictorian at Piqua High School, and throughout his four years at PHS, he has participated in extracurriculars such as student leadership, cross country, track and field, and National Honor Society. He has served as president of the class of 2018 all four years. He was selected to attend Rila and Buckeye Boys State and was a Piqua teen leader his junior year. He is also a National Merit Scholar. Cameron will attend Harvard University in the fall. I just wanted to quickly say thank you, genuinely thank you to everyone in this district and for all you're doing because I really feel like there's no limit to any opportunity and anything we can do and anything we want to achieve, we can really get to it. I mean. I'm from Piqua, I've, I've gone here my whole life, and when I decided one day that I wanted to apply to Oxford University in England, there was just the resources here to help me set that up and help me get that done and get the testing and all of that red tape and stuff that need to be done. So just because the systems weren't in place, that doesn't mean that nobody wouldn't go out of their way to get those opportunities. So just genuinely thank you all, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And next up is Leanne Price. Leanne Price is the proud daughter of Jeff and Linda Price and the 2018 Piqua High School class salutatorian. While in high school, she was very involved in extracurricular activities, including student leadership, National Honor Society, Link Leaders, Chief Athletic Leadership Club, and Model United Nations. In addition to this, she played soccer all four years of high school, serving as a captain her senior year. She was also selected to attend the Hobie and Ryla Leadership Camps her sophomore year of high school. Outside of school, she was involved in her community by volunteering at both Green Street Church and Piqua Central Intermediate School. Next year, she will be going to Butler. Um, I just wanna quickly thank both my teachers and my coaches throughout high school. They've definitely challenged me and helped prepare me for the next chapters of my life and the lessons that I've been able to learn both in and out of the classroom have prepared me for not only college but life beyond. Next we would like to recognize um, some of our staff members. Um, each year we go through a process where we select a, um, a teacher of the year each building selects an educator of the year and then they're put out for a vote for the district and we have one teacher of the year for the district then and then we do the same thing with our um, support staff member of the year. And um, I'm gonna call Mrs. Rosencrantz back up to the microphone. She has, oh, go ahead and clap for her. She's <laughs> she loves attention so everybody stare at her while I talk about it for attention. a second here. <laughs> She's been with us 19 years, and she started out as a sixth grade teacher at Bennett, and I had the privilege of working at the same building with her when she was there, and she was just as great back then as a teacher as she is um, now as a counselor. She really, really is our go-to counselor, I think, for everybody. No matter what grade level she is with, she was with the seniors this year, you can go to her and ask her pretty much any question, and I think most people do, even students and parents um, go to her a lot. So we are very, very lucky to have her on board, and. Um, I think it goes without saying that the competition for this uh, um, distinction was very um, tight this year. There was a lot of really, really good people, and um, for her to pull out and get that was, was even that much more of an honor. So, Beth, would you like to share anything um, on your behalf? Um, I, I just want to say thank you. I, first off, I can't believe I've been working in the district for 19 years <laughs> because I'm really not sure that I'm really that old. So. <laughs> um, 
And I mean, at Bennett and, at, and both at the high school, I've had just great relationships and experiences with um, principals, administrators, um, other counselors, the teachers, and um, of course the kids. And that's the reason I've stayed in the district. Um, and I've just, and I'm not saying that to kiss anybody, kiss up to anybody at all, because that's not my personality. <laughs> um, but so, and I just want to say thank you um, to the Pickwell High School staff for even recognizing me, and then, then for the district. Um, I'm, I always say I'm a person that prefers to fly under the radar, um, but everybody has been very kind. Um, a few of you rather sarcastic, uh, but, but again, just thank you for the recognition. So I appreciate it. Uh, next, I'll call up our, our Teacher of the Year, um, Stacy. Stacy Patton was, um, has been in the district 25 years. We were hired the same year, both of us at South Street School. Uh, so again, I got to work with her um, a, as well, and I, and I saw back then um, how great she was with students, and that has never changed. And her staff um, overwhelmingly nominated her at Pickle Central this year, and um, again, she was put up against all the teachers at um, Educators of the Year for other buildings, and she was the, the true standout. The committee that met and read through all that, um, hands down, went right right to, to, to her application. So it was very, very nice to have her on board. She's got a very special message, I believe, for our teachers, and she's gonna represent our district and our students very, very well next year in this position. So Thank please um, congratulate her, and then I'll let her talk. Thank you. Well, to piggyback off of what uh, Beth said, Piqua City Schools is very different. And I knew that at my first interview. Because at the conclusion, I went around, it was a room full of administrators at the old Piqua Central, and went around and shook everybody's hand. And I went to one principal, and she did not shake my hand. She hugged me. And I remember thinking, either I nailed that interview, or it went very, very wrong. <laughs> so. And so it was, um, through the last 25 years, um, every building, every position, the people I worked with, the kids I served, they've become friends and family. And that's what it's about. So, thank you. So again, again, congratulations to each of them. Um, Stacy in particular will be giving some presentations and speeches next year, and her, and her first one will be on our opening day on, on August 10th next year. So that'll be exciting to hear her, her message to the, to the district. Mr. Superintendent, yes. I'd like to say something to the Valley for its salutatorians and also the teachers and the staff support person here. Valley Dictorian and salutatorians, you guys are the stars of this school district. Now, a lot of times we see the sports page, people there and other areas there. The reason why we exist are, are for people like you. I'm very proud of all of you. I hope you have wonderful careers in college and also on your adventures in life. And these folks, Mrs. Patton, Mrs. Riggs and Trance, I've known forever. I think she had all my kids. It seemed like every year she, she got booted down. These are the people you should emulate. They're outstanding stars in our district also. They have a lot of passion. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Any other board members like to say anything? I'm going to graciously let you know that you can leave if you would like to at this time. You're welcome <laughs> to stay, but, but all of you that just got recognized, you're welcome to go because we're going to continue then with some business type things. So thank you so much for your time tonight. You got speeches to practice for graduation anyway, right? <laughs> Um, next is um, Jeff, uh, Jeff Meyer, who is here from Meyer Construction. Um, last year, around this time, we were getting ready to um, fix one of our rooms up for our new media class, and um, we started noticing some problems. Paint wasn't sticking to the wall. Things just weren't going very well, and we had um, Jeff come in and help us try to figure out what was going on, and, and we found out that we had quite a bit of water retention in the envelope. And in further investigation, we found out some flashing and a lot of other things at the high school here had some pretty big um, issues. So we um, did a, a, a resolution to have them do some work, and they've completed a lot of that this year. One of our um, concerns was we didn't have anything of the history that had been done previously on the roof and the things that had happened in this building over the, the, the almost 40 years now that the high school has been in existence. So in this process, we've asked for some before and after photos, and we've asked for a portfolio, if you will, 
that we can keep as a historic document for our reference and people way down the line that can look at that and look back to this work that we're doing so we can make sure we're maintaining this building and all of our buildings properly. So um, I believe you finished it and we're going to have Jeff talk a little bit about that work because that was one of the things we, we asked of anybody that got this project and he's ready to talk about um, what happened with it and where we are with it. So Jeff? So I had a lot of pictures to choose from so I hope I put a good story together to go through the process of what we did out here at the high school this past year. The, uh, the work we did on the facade was cleaning exterior masonry, spot tuck pointing, caulking of all the windows, doors, and expansion joints, painting of all the steel lintels, and then finally we applied the clear water repellent to all the masonry surfaces. This is a picture depicting um, some of the before areas of the brick showing um, efflorescence, lime runs, carbonation, and fungus, um, and it was pretty much found throughout the entire facade. Um, all throughout. Here's a process of cleaning. Um, we clean all the masonry surfaces from the top down with the use of a high pressure washer and masonry detergent um, to get all the lime runs off. Left for essence, we had to use some grinding discs actually in some areas. We sand those things off down to the brick. They just, chemicals wouldn't touch them. Here's a picture showing the mortar <coughs> removal process. Um, again, once the cleaning was done, our guys scanned the entire wall and we, we found was a lot of deteriorated mortar, a lot of cracked mortar, so the, all those areas had to be removed um, back to sound mortar before we could proceed with the restoration process. Here's a picture um, where bricks are being removed. I'd say overall in the entire high school we probably moved around 150 bricks <coughs> individually in different specific areas, a lot, of, a lot around windows where water was getting in and the freeze thaw here in Ohio, you know, cracking the bricks right in half. Here's the process for tuck pointing. So all the, all the buildings have been inspected, all the old mortar joints have been removed, and now we're putting the mortar back in, and that was applied in layers um, with the approved mortar. We went through several, several mortar samples to get the right color. Um, we think we found a really good color um, to match the original mortar, and that's really a hard process to do. Um, we, we put in four or five different samples, and you, you try to get the best one, and as you go around the building, different, different variations of mortar here and there. So we, our guys, um, was flexible with that so the idea was when we leave we didn't want you guys to see we were here we want everything to blend in blend in here's um, control joint being prepared for caulking um, all the all the caulking and all the control joints was well beyond its life expectancy so all that was removed we installed a, a foam backer rod and installed a urethane sealant and all the control joints all the windows and one of the last processes on the facade was applying um, finished paint to all the steel lentils. All the steel lentils were wire brushed, all the rust was removed, and two coats of paint were applied to all the steel. And the final step to the facade re renovation was a water repellent. Um, we applied all the clear penetrating sealer to all the masonry surfaces with low pressure. And if, I don't know if you can see it in the picture there, you get a really nice run, penetrates into it, dries clear, allows the w masonry to breathe, but it, re yet it repels the water. Moving on to the roof replacement, well, what we did up there was we um, replaced all the through wall flashing, complete new modified roof system at Area 2, and a complete retrofit to the greenhouse. So Area 2 um, is the, the part of the roof which is the lowest part of the, of the entire roof area, um, which is right in the middle over the commons area and, and down the hallways and over the offices and that was taking on majority of the water. There's a couple of shots of it, one facing the greenhouse and one over the kitchen area is where I'm standing taking the picture there. That's, and that's the existing roof that we removed um, from the area too. There's a shot of some of the flashing that was done. We don't know exactly when, um, but it was just an EPDM rubber that was put in there and it, was, it had failed. Um, flashing wasn't installed right. The material had failed itself. The sealant had failed. Um, we felt that was a big, big part of the problem of the water getting in. So here's a couple of shots of the flashing system that we put in. We put in a stainless steel flashing um, through wall. We covered it with a perma barrier, perma barrier wrap on top of the flashing, and we terminated that with a termination bar. And we installed the weep vents so when water would get in there, it'd have a place to escape. And there's the finished 
finished picture of the flashing showing the stainless steel out there on the bottom, the new brick and the brick vent put in place. Um, I don't know if you guys remember back last year when we showed you those pictures, those weep tubes were just packed solid full of mortar. Like when they laid the brick, they just jammed them in there. So these, these uh, vents here are, are the full width of the joint. The, the white thermoplastic roof was removed, the insulation was removed, and there wasn't an area up there that we didn't remove that we didn't find moisture. There was, there was water everywhere. Um, so here's a shot of uh, the, the dense deck insulation going back down. And there's a shot of the new roof system tying into the greenhouse, which was completely refurbished. All the panels were removed. All the aluminum framing was clean. New gaskets were installed and the panels were put back in place. And there's a couple of shots of the roof system looking over the common area. And then there's a shot of the, the new refrigeration system above the kitchen. In summary, uh, the facade was complete in the fall of 2017, followed up by the roof this past spring. Um, the facade water pellets have a 10 year life expectancy. The roof replacement has a 20 year warranty and a life expectancy of about 35 years, barring we keep the drains clean and we don't abuse the roof. That's all I got. <laughs> I hope that told the story of what we did out there last year. Any questions? Right yeah, here. Jeff, I know I went out there one day in the summer and you took me up and showed me and I was very impressed. I don't I don't know a thing about doing roofs, but he took me around, he explained. Thank goodness that lift wasn't working. I wasn't into that, but we <laughs> climbed up and I actually fit through a hatch, believe it or not. Yeah. Made it down too without jumping. I had to push so. him through. <laughs> but you you did some excellent work. Thank well, you. And thank I, you. I appreciate, I appreciate the transparency. I appreciate that. I really do. Everything don't. you did. Yeah, the, the Pickle Schools was great to work with. We we had a lot of noise out here, um, and they dealt with it. They worked with us really really well. It was good. Uh, we appreciate the work you've done to maintain this building. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Lasts a lot longer. That's a great building. It's a great building. <coughs> Hopefully then 10, 15 years down the road, we come back out here, there'll be a lot less work to do. We should mention that um, we've also entered into agreement with him to make sure that he maintains the rest of our buildings in the same way so that we're doing preventative maintenance ahead of time so that we don't end up in a situation where we're having to do massive repairs in an emergency situation. So we, right. we're, we're getting annual inspections like twice. Yeah, we're going annual inspection. Yeah, we're going after twice a year, just trying to find problems early before they become big problems. And prevent a maintenance save, saves a lot of money down the road. Is that it? Right, Thanks. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, next is the approval of our lunch fees. Um, I'm referencing this Excel spreadsheet that has just some list and some comparisons, like to show you just where we are. The top districts are the um, districts that are most like Pickle City Schools. Each year the state of Ohio puts out a list of, of schools that are most like us, and that's based on everything from the economy, the number of students, and number of students that might be um, economically disadvantaged. So you can see we are at $2.05 for elementary and $2.20 at the secondary level. We are the lowest at the secondary level throughout this whole um, list of, of schools and we only have two schools that are at two dollars just right below us at the elementary I think the last time we ever raised our prices were uh, was in 2013 So we're just asking for the same um, rates as we have uh, in the past So we're not raising those and our cafeteria always operates um, In the black we've never had issues of, of you know not being fiscally sound there So we're doing well that way Any questions regarding that? And then our next one, uh, discussion on um, school fees. We currently have $40 school fees at the elementary level and $46 at the high school with additional fees for certain classes. So chemistry might have lab fees, et cetera. Um, we've done some math, we've looked at some different things and we believe that um, we could do a better job of collecting fees if we lowered them to $20 across the board. Um, in the past, the, the fees were used extensively for workbooks with open education resources, with internet resources that have happened with Common Core. We don't need a lot of workbooks anymore. And um, what we would like to do is what we're proposing, collect $20 per kid and then not ask for all the school supplies that we have in the past. We would ask parents to provide a book bag, um, earbuds because students need those for the technology we have and kids want their own earbuds for um, health reasons 
and then pencils, because kids just kind of eat their pencils, I think, sometimes. So it'd be best if they just went ahead and bought their pencils. We believe we can get the school supplies at EPC, and we can also work through um, um, a Francis office supply locally and get really good rates. Um, we do the Stuff the Bus with the United Way I in the year, and we've had um, some churches sponsor. Those supplies have been very helpful to students and would continue to be helpful to us, especially in the art classrooms where um, they're very much needed. But we think this will give every student equal art supplies to use. It'll give the teachers the ability to have really good supplies for, for the learning that takes place, and it will significantly reduce the cost for parents to start the school year. So that's our proposal, is to lower the fees to $20, ask students to bring backpacks, pencils, and earbuds, and we'll provide the rest. Now, are you talking about $20 across the board or and yep. secondary? And currently what you see is our $40, but you can see where we range again with schools, the top 20 that are most like us, as well as schools within our county. We're already very competitive, but putting it down to $20 would pretty much put us, it would put us at the lowest rate in terms of what we're asking parents to provide. And um, we've looked pretty hard at this. We, we do think that we could actually collect more fees. That would put it at $5 a quarter. We think that's very doable for families to, to, to provide. And we think we can um, get the school supplies that we need. They'll be more uniform, more consistent. It'll give us uh, what we need so every kid will have what they need to learn. At the $40 rate, have we had any students not graduate because they had not paid their fees? They graduate. They don't get their their diploma until they pay their fees. And yes, we have a number of students that have a pretty hefty bill by the time they get to their senior year. Mr. Thompson, would the school um, course fees stay in place? In yes. High school and junior high? Yes, that would have to stay in place for certain classes. So again, like your science classes and so on. But it would still be a significant reduction. Could we do a maximum course fee for the high school? Could we? Is that what you asked? Yeah, I mean, some of these kids end up having a hundred and some odd dollars, and we max out. The if you pull out um, this form right here, it, it, it'll give you a list of all those, so we can take a look at that and see what what those are. So you can see all the science fees that are on there, the pre-engineering and robotics classes. Can we make, I mean, just a suggestion, but can we make a maximum <coughs> total fees of Fifty dollars per student. So, the high school parent is it? We we is might. I, I'm not sure. When you look at the foreign language, um, the applied technology, they do have workbooks there. That's why those fees are twenty dollars. Right. The same thing with the sports medicine, because that that changes each year. That is a, a new book that they use every year. Well, I understand some of it. My yeah. my biggest issues with fees is you get this big bill. Yeah. Right at the beginning of the school year, you've just gone out and bought your kids new clothes, new shoes, and new everything else, and all of a sudden they get hit with a sure. with larger families, three hundred, two to three hundred dollar bills. And you know, I'm, I'm just looking and I'm imagining a student that um, I'm just looking to see who would have the majority. I think we could come up with a number because there are many students that wouldn't have all of these all at once. I think I think that would be doable. I think we could figure that out. I think we could look at some averages and find out because some of these are they're only taking at certain grade levels. So I think we could do that. I would just want to do a couple, you know, pull some random students and find out what what it would look like. What would be a, a realistic number? You're looking at max per student, not max per family, correct? Correct. So if a family has four kids that are in school at the same time, you're not going to say, well, there's a max of 100 bucks right. for the family. Okay. Yeah. And again, I mean, unless they've got twins or triplets or something like that, they're they're right. spread out anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, we could do that. We could look at that. So then tonight we would just be considering the twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Yep. And if we wanted to come back and do a maximum number, give us a chance to really look at that and come up with a reasonable okay, let's, number. Let's do that. Yeah. Good suggestion. Any other thoughts? Concerns or questions? We think this will be be very helpful to families. Okay. Um, next is a discussion on report cards. Um, most districts, I, I think every district I know, has a policy, um, as well as we do, that indicates if the student doesn't pay the school fees, they don't get the report card. We've talked about this for several years, but we just really feel like it sends a mixed message. We're trying to engage parents with 
good conversation about the progress of the student and then if, if they don't pay the fee we say we can't give you the report card so with progress book we can give 24 7 access to the grades um, we would like to get rid of that policy we'd like to open up the communication and make it better um, invite the parents to that conversation more and give them everything we can on the students progress so they have things to take home and review and and have right there at their fingertips um, we believe, again, with reducing the fees, we'll, we'll collect what we need. Uh, we think that in itself will be much more of an incentive than withholding um, things from them. In addition to that, um, several districts we've spoken to, even within our county, no longer print report cards. So if they have 24 access, they can get online, they can look at progress book, they can see where the child's progress is. For us to print that four times a year plus what we would need to put in the file it is quite an expense. If a parent really needed it because they didn't have access, they could simply call the school and they could, they could ask the teacher to print it. The schools we've talked to say that's very minimal now because most people at least have a, a, a service on their phone. And Progress Book can be accessed on the phone, so they could see the kids' grades pretty much any time. So our, our recommendation would be that we get rid of the policy saying, if you don't pay the fees, you don't get a report card. But we also stop printing report cards. We make them accessible 24-7. If they want one printed, they can contact us and we will print one. Because our goal again is to make sure they get what they need. Any questions or concerns on that? Can you not print them from Progress Book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could. Okay. It would, I don't know that it looks the same format as what we do, but they could print off okay. what, what, it, what, it, what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Going on. Anything there? Okay. Um, the last part, um, we went through and um, looked at our bus times for next year. We had to tweak a few things this year. Um, you know, we've, we've got the new buildings that opened a couple years ago and, and more and more our population is shifting and changing as um, new housing comes in and, and students are moving and, and so on. So we had to make a few five to 10 minute adjustments on the transportation, which did affect these start and end times. So um, Tony, Mr. Lyons has been working with them on that. And he's gonna share a little bit of that because we're gonna improve that process. And we're triple routed. We, we move 1,900 kids a day uh, on 21 buses. We found out how efficient that was just the other day in our meeting with Pete, which we'll talk about later. Um, but what we were running into was getting kids to school just a couple minutes late, which kind of threw everything off for breakfast time. So arrival time for next year at uh, Pickle High School and Pickle Junior High School will be 7.30 as opposed to uh, 7.35. Uh, for Pickle Central Intermediate, um, it'll be 8.35. Spring Creek in Washington will be 9 o'clock start times. And again, all, all that's looking at because we're triple routed and trying to be as efficient as possible we did notice and Beth was great about noticing some of those gaps running a few minutes late different to different buildings and that's the adjustment met with principals and they felt like those adjustments were easy enough to make that it wouldn't make a huge impact on, the, on what they do at the building level questions on that Tony referenced that um, we met with a gentleman by the name of Pete, um, Pete Japensky came from the state. Every so often you kind of get your name randomly pulled for a, an audit and our transportation audit was this year and um, it went very well. Um, they, they all met together and went over the results with that. Um, Pete was very, very complimentary with what we've done and, and how we've um, improved in many areas. So Tony and Jeremy were both there um, with Beth during the audit. So I'll let them talk a little bit about that and give you some feedback from, from the state. The, probably the most knowledgeable person I've ever met about school transportation. Yeah. So it was great to hear from, from his perspective. But the goal of the review is really just to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the department. Um, as you know, we made some changes being effective. Um, the focus, the, the review focused specifically on safety, routing, vehicle maintenance, personnel, and district related items. And it's not an in the office meeting. Pete actually goes out, talks to drivers, talks to aides talks to the mechanic, looks at our equipment, and does a thorough uh, investigation. Like I said, 1,900 students a day using 21 buses. Interesting part of this was um, without this service, transportation for Pickle City Schools, based on current cost analysis of transporting by car, an additional 13 cars would, 1,300 cars would have to be on the road, and the additional cost to the community of over $600,000. So our service not only is very economical for, for the district, very economical for the community too. Um, so that was a great piece. Uh, the, the biggest conclusion was that the service that we deliver to our students on behalf of the district is, in his words, uh, on solid ground and serves the community very well. And coming from Pete, I would say that's a huge compliment. Yeah. The nice part, he said nobody ever gets 100. 
percent. We knew that going in. What we did here was there are some things that he recommended, and some from the time that he did the evaluation, the time that he met with us, had already been adjusted by Beth. Such a huge credit to her team um, under her leadership. She and Lugina and Polly in that main office really running that program um, and taking it in a kind of a different direction. Our drivers are outstanding, as, as most of you know, and um, got a good result out of that uh, audit. I mean, the biggest takeaway for, for the treasurer's office end of the whole thing was the efficiency part of it. And, um, you know, on a scale of zero to two and one being the middle of the road, we were at 1.56. So we're triple routed, and he says that's really hard to do, the efficiency-wise. So he says you're doing something right because most people are only, only do it twice, not three times. So to do it three times and be at a 1.56, um, he says that you guys are – I can't even offer you anything to do to try to help financially because you guys are doing what you need to do. So, that I mean, that's just uh, at that point I had to drag him back in the meeting because he was ready to leave. He <laughs> heard that part. He was go. no, so it was good, very positive. So, uh, two years ago we were over budget in transportation. We are well under. We're, we are very efficient right now. I might add, I obviously some of you know I see a lot of different school districts buses roll in every day, mm -hmm. and the buses that come from Pickwick City Schools are hands. Uh, over anything that we see coming in from any other district. So, you know, Good your staff is doing doing things right. Thank and we've you. never had a Piqua bus have to come get a spare. We've had that from Lima. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last thing, I just want to share something that I think is really um, great. Um, you, you've heard the Garden Tribe. If you've never been to the Garden at Pickle Central Intermediate, you have to go see it. Um, it's, it's been harvested right now, but um, they had such a great harvest with the lettuce that they grew that not only did all the students at that school get to have a salad, they had some left over for all the staff to have salads the next day, and then they donated five large bags of salad to the Bethany Center, for which they were thrilled because they don't get fresh produce like that. So our students, not only did they get to eat what they, what they grew, they served the teachers what they grew, and then they gave to the community their crops and it was great if you've not seen the pictures go on our social media and look at some of the pictures of the kids um, harvesting their, their crops over there it is really really cool and I just thought that was a, a great event that our Pickle Central students um, participated in this week they, they did a great job with that and that's it for me okay let's go off your superintendent's right. agenda so we'd like to recommend the board approval of the 2018-2019 school fee as presented Recommend board approval of the 2018-2019 meal prices per the attached document. Recommend board approval of the 2018-2019 start of the school year and end of the times per attached document. Recommend board approval of the attached student handbooks for the 2018-2019 school year. And then I'll have Teresa come up here in just a second to share with you one quick adoption that we're going to do. Uh, recommend board approval of the attached book adoption proposal. So Ms. Anderson, would you come forward and share this book real quick and um, we'll vote on the agenda. I wasn't sure I was going to make it through there. Um, we are proposing that there be a new book adoption. It's called Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Draper. Um, this book would be used in our junior high language arts classes. The um, book is from a multiple award-winning author, Sharon Draper. It comes um, a story that will forever change how we look at anyone with a disability, um, very much in lines with the book Wonder, if you're familiar with that book and, the, and that movie. 11-year-old um, Melody is not like most people. She can't walk, she can't talk, she can't write, all because she has cerebral palsy. But she also has a photographic memory, memory, and she can remember every detail of everything she has ever experienced. She's the smartest kid in her whole school, but no one knows it. Most people, her teachers, her doctor, her classmates, dismiss her as mentally challenged because she can't tell them otherwise. But Melody refuses to be defined by her disability, and she's determined to let everyone know it somehow. Um, the reason for including this um, new book at the junior high is that the instructors were interested in replacing the book, The Acorn People, that is currently being used as a class novel. Uh, it's very outdated, and the kids have mentioned before that they'd like to read something a little bit newer and, and more modern. Um, after completing research to find books with similar themes to the Acorn People, the great lessons that um, it teaches, they decided on this book. After reading it, the instructors discovered that it does a great job of teaching empathy and kindness, and it's got a lot of humor in it, too. 
It serves as a great example of a personal narrative writing, which is the writing focused for the first quarter. It also supports the underlying concepts of PBIS in the classroom and district-wide that we've been focusing on. Um, this book will serve as an introduction to personal narrative writing, so the students will read it in both large and small groups and then practice their own narrative writing, discuss the plot themes, and work with the concepts of empathy and kindness. Um, there is no real controversy around this book, so we, we feel confident that it's not something that would, ri would cause any um, discern from our parents in terms of its appropriateness or inappropriateness for their students to read. So we would like to um, make the recommendation that this book be adopted as um, for the junior high language arts program. Along with the teachers, our other curriculum director, Scott Bloom, has read the book. So that's it for me. Okay. And this, the superintendent's opinion on the school fees, do we want to vote on those that night or do we want to table that? I would like to vote on at least this part right now because it, the handbooks are contingent on that. So we need to get those into print. I think we're good on the $20. I think we can make the other adjustment pretty pretty easily um, because they won't have to pay those till school starts anyway. Students come in and out of classes. So I think we'll be fine to, to do that over June board meeting. Okay. Make a motion to adopt the superintendent's agenda. Okay, we got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. You guys decide. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, Jeremy, please call the roll. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mr. Patrizio. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Height. Aye. Motion carries. Personnel agenda. Thank you. Mr. Hyde, I appreciate that. Um, we have several people in the audience today who are um, going to be either new to the district or in new positions, and I'd like to do some introductions and give them a chance to introduce themselves and family members who are here. So we'll start with um, Kyle Cutnall and his family, if you'd like to come up. Kyle will be our new family as well, all the way up to the podium. We'd love to see all of you. You don't have to, but um, Kyle will be our new assistant principal at Pickle Central Intermediate School, and we're happy to have him here. Um, yeah, this is a, thank you everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of Pickwood City Schools. I'm excited. Um, when I interviewed with, with uh, Josh and some of the board members and some of the staff members, I knew immediately it was a school that I really wanted to be a part of. And I'm excited about the, uh, the positive behavior interventions and um, all the different uh, incentives with outdoor education as well. Me being a former health and PE teacher, I really value that outdoor education piece. I think it's exciting. My son is Nathaniel and he is here. Um, he's a little bit past bedtime, getting close to meltdown time, so I'm going to go as quick as I can. Um, and this is my wife, Mandy. Mandy is a second grade teacher at Crydersville Elementary and Wapakoneta City Schools. Um, so we're, we're really excited to be a part of the, the district, and um, we're excited to get started soon. So. Thank you. Happy to have you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So we're probably going to sneak out just because. It's That's why you got to go first. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ross Loudenbach. Uh, Ross is here with us, and, and as you know, i um, happy to have him serving as the uh, principal next year at Spring Creek Primary School. And also, um, Sarah Watson will be our new assistant principal at Spring Creek Primary as well, and I know she's here and has some family with her as well, so welcome to the podium and, and welcome to uh, your new position. You're welcome to bring them all. Bring them on up. Bring them up. We're family. Come on up, family. You guys can come up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to thank the board um, and also Mr. Thompson, Mr. Lyons, um, Mr. Lambeck for this amazing opportunity. I um, can introduce my family really quick. This is my husband, Joel, and then I've got my sister, Tricia, here, my aunt and uncle, Ted and Dot, and my father, George Atkinson. Um, but they're all here because I've got a great support system behind me that are encouraging me as I'm moving into this new position. So that's number one. Um, number two, I'm really looking forward to continuing my leadership opportunities within this district. Um, I, this is, I'm going to be starting my 14th year in education. I taught um, for nine years in Atlanta, Georgia. 
um, and then moved back here when I met my husband um, and have been with Pitqua City Schools since. I have been a classroom teacher, a Title I reading teacher, reading recovery teacher, a literacy coach, um, and I'm moving from that literacy coach position into an assistant principal position. And I truly am looking forward to learning from Mr. Loudenbeck as I'm transitioning into this position. Um, and there's so many great things happening at Spring Creek Primary. And so, you know, my goal, and I'm sure his goal is too, is to build a collaborative relationship to really support the great things happening within this district. Um, but first and foremost, to to support our students and increase student achievement and then also continue to build capacity within our teachers. Um, we have a wonderful community support around us and I'm looking forward to supporting that work. So, um, and they're all gonna be along <laughs> for the journey, so. Um, but thank you all, I truly appreciate this opportunity. I'm looking forward to great things, so thank you. Thanks. Jamie Durkee is in the audience as well. Jamie will be teaching math at Pickle High School uh, this coming year, and she drove two and a half hours to get here <laughs> today. So we're also going to be talking about some relocation services too. So <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, I actually already have a place because my brother is in Germany, right. so I can live in his place. But yes, I came all the way from Cambridge, Ohio. I currently teach at Cambridge High School, um, about two and a half hours um, on the other side of Columbus from here, about the same distance on the other side of Columbus as you guys are, um, the intersection of 70 and 77, if you don't know where uh, Cambridge is. Um, was looking to get back to more home. I went to Green and High School, so was looking for something in the Dayton Springfield region and was fortunate enough to get a phone call actually from the middle school um, for a position there, but then they were looking for both the high school or middle school position. I interviewed um, with both the high school and middle school principals, and um, I was willing to teach at either one, and actually it was um, Mr. Lyons that had said that they had discussed and said that uh, they wanted me at the high school because of the position that I was taking uh, in the co-teaching. I've had three years, I guess three and a half if you count my student teaching, of being in a co-taught classroom with actually two different co-teachers, um, one for Algebra one and one for Geometry, so I've had that experience, and I'm really looking forward to being back home, and um, I'm really excited to be at Piqua. I've, I've uh, had a friend from college who went here, and she always talked good things about Piqua, so I'm really excited to be a part of this district. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Welcome, and thank you for being here. And Kate Schultz will be our uh, guidance counselor at Piqua, Piqua High School, and she is very excited to be here as well, so welcome. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to thank the board and Mr. Thompson and Mr. Lyons. I'm really excited to join the district. Um, I've known Beth a year, just I work at Layman Catholic High School currently, but um, known her and I've heard great things about Pickle and I'm really excited to join. Great, welcome. Thank Good you. Good to have you here. As you can see, we have a couple other folks who weren't able to make it tonight, and we did some recent hiring over the last week or week and a half, and they'll be appearing at future meetings. So that's the personnel agenda. Okay. You sent them bios and pictures. Oh, I did, and I mentioned to a couple people, we've started to add um, bios and, and photographs of each one of our new candidates, and I think we're up to date as of tonight. I shared it out in a Google Doc so that you have that information as well, so you can kind of put a face with the name when you're out in the building. Okay, are there any other questions for Mr. Lyons? If not, can we have a motion to approve the personnel agenda? So Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mr. Riddle, please call the roll. Mr. Patrizio. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Height. Aye. We have no Old business, new business. Um. Would like to recommend the board for the first read of the attached Pickle City Schools um, District random drug testing policy. Uh, just to give a, a quick timeline, I jotted down some work that we've done for, for a, well over a year now. We began discussing this as a board uh, last year, actually. Um, we visited Miami East, a group of us that included some board members and administrators. We've met with administration and athletic directors. Um, at Miami East in September. Um, we visited several vendors at the Ohio School Board Association in November and looked at a variety of companies that provide this service. 
And upon our return, I met with Great Lakes Biomedical based on a recommendation from Miami East and Covington who had used them um, for more than one year at each of their schools and thought they were very, uh, a very good company. Uh, they really enjoyed working with them. They thought they had good integrity. The process went really smooth and they, they make themselves quite available to answer any questions. Actually, Kyle Pruder's here tonight. He and his colleague have been at every one of our meetings with parents and coaches and, and has answered a, a number of questions on just all the technical stuff that um, the ins and outs of, of this whole process. Um, we worked um, then with our legal team uh, up through April when we finally had a product that we thought fit our, our needs very well. And at that time we met with all the coaches and our athletic director um, and, and again through um, Great Lakes Biomedical. We, we met together and talked to the coaches got their impact, uh, their input and their feedback and um, had no concerns from the coaches as well as our marching band director and our show choir director who will be participating in the program as well. Um, from that point, um, we brought coaches and again some board members and, and administration to a parent booster group, um, presented what we had at that time and the fee based on the feedback we had from coaches, um, had really great discussion great, great support. Uh, we actually had some parents there from Marching Band who participate in delivering that, that process through another company and um, they were very, very informational. They help a lot of people through recovery addicts and um, I thought that they added so much great information to uh, the discussion that we had. So um, no concerns um, from that group as well and um, again finished up the details, um, sent that to legal and um, everybody at this point feels very good about the product that we have. So uh, a good year long process of putting this together, but we feel very, very good about it. Um, I think the greatest strength that we're going to offer to our students is the fact that these students now have a, a very viable way of saying no to peer pressure because if they really want to participate, and our students really do, because our extracurriculars are great, um, they now can look at their friend and say, I'm not going to do this because I could be pulled to be tested and that will eliminate me from um, being a part of the program. So that's the best feedback I think our parents gave us was they love that their students, their own children were going to be able to to have that as a comment or a comeback to peer pressure. Questions for me or Kyle. Kyle again is our, our expert from, from Great Lakes Biomedical. Question for the board. Since we've gone through the vetting process pretty thoroughly on, on this, uh, are, will we be in a position tonight to approve this rather than just do this as a first read? I think it, I have no doubt that this is going to pass as a board or with this board. I hope it will at least. I, I just want to comment and state that you're in the line of work I am. You see the you see every day the destruction of substance abuse that substance abuse has on people. If we can stop some of these kids from getting involved with drugs, I think it's wonderful. And I think this policy does that. I would like to hold off voting on it till next month just because it's a first read and there may be some parents who want to, to if it doesn't affect the implement, implementation of the program. It, it makes it tight. We, what we wanted to do was okay. go ahead and test every, every student to have a clean slate in the beginning, especially since show choirs having tryouts and fall sports are coming in. We could do it. it it's, it's a very fast communication turnaround to parents if, if we wait. Well, then I'll make a motion but, but to... we could. I'll, I'll make a motion. Do we need to waive the... Waive it or... You need would. Make, make a motion to waive the, the three readings? We and I guess I would add to nothing in any of this. We've communicated this very, very openly that there's no gotcha in this at all. And, and the policy is very clear about our intent to, to help students and to pre put preventative type measures in place. So um, all the parent meetings, like I said, and then there were two board members yep. that were there and the coaches meetings were very, very positive. It was very well received. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't push it through if I felt like there was any concern by, by parents at, at all at this point. I think I, I've been on it with them since the very beginning. It's, I think um, it was well received at the meetings and parents were very positive. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion to waive the reading. Second. Motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Hill, call the roll on this one, please. 
Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mr. Patrizio. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Height. Aye. Okay, so we've waived the we've waived the readings. Okay, Wait. so um, we'll I'll begin working with um, Principal Messick as well as um, our athletic director Chip Hare, and we'll begin that communication process out to parents about the process. <coughs> Make a motion to adopt the drug policy. Do we have drug a second? Policy. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Like Clint, I was in the meetings, and, and there's been nothing but positives. I've heard actually positive things from some of the student athletes, even. So uh, mm -hmm. it, the word is out there. So, Mr. Hiddle, please call the roll. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Mr. Patrizio. Aye. Mr. Height. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, would like to recommend board approval of the bid from Fanning and Howie Construction for our safety projects. Um, well before any incident happened in February, we had a, a group of people that have been working pretty, um, uh, thank you Mr. Critter for coming tonight, um, working very, very carefully on redesigning um, the office spaces at the high school as well as the Pickle Junior High School. Uh, we all know that Columbine um, happened in 1999. Buildings built at that time um, were not designed for um, incidents that have happened currently in, in schools. So. Um, we needed to redesign those office spaces and provide different uh, entryways and flow of traffic so that we can make sure that um, we, we have proper containment of people so they don't have free access to the building. So we've worked um, extensively with the police department. We've worked with contractors that have training in designing these spaces. Um, we, we, we had ideas we liked that got nixed, but we've also had ideas that we never thought of that they brought forward to us. And um, put those out to bid, and Brad Bupp works, um, uh, lives local here and, and works with Fanning and Howie. I would invite him to come forward and talk about where we are with it and some of the summer work that will take place that uh, we look forward to seeing. Okay. <clears throat> By the way, lately I'm just known as Darby's dad, so <laughs> feel free to do that. Um, we have uh, opened the bids, and they were uh, under the estimated amount, so we were able to get some of those alternative bids that we wanted to get. So we've kind of got a contractor ready to go. Um, we've notified him we have an intent to award after you guys have your meeting and, and approve that. Uh, actually, I'm meeting with them tomorrow to kind of give them the, this is how this project's gonna run uh, scenario. But um, yeah, it's all, uh, we're doing these all over all over the country, really. They're, we call them security vestibules, and that's, everybody wants them. We can't hardly get them done fast enough, so <coughs> we're, we're very busy with this exact same thing. So any, any questions from any of you? Is this gonna be ready for the fall? That's that's the absolute goal. That's why we're working on it right okay. now. We've, we've talked to Brad about being here weekly, meeting with contractors, really reinforcing that. Our business coordinator, Sean, um, Shoemaker will be doing that same thing. They're going to be meeting weekly to be going over all of that um, details. They're going to be the point of reference throughout the summer to, to work very hard at getting that finished. That's that's the certain goal, pending no big, you know, interruption somehow. So driving across town is pretty easy for me to get here. So mm -hmm. it's it's kind of nice for once. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really good about the design. Like I said, we've spent quite a bit of time uh, going over this with some, some pretty, I think, well-educated um, um, people on the process. Okay. Are there any other questions? We need a motion to? Yes. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to uh, approve the uh, construction project. So moved. We have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, Mr. Hiddle, please call the roll. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Patrizio. Aye. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mrs. McMacken. Aye. Mr. Height. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, thank you, and you're, you're welcome to go if you'd like, but thank you for, for being here. I might as well stay now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to go spend time with Darby, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, mental health issues are of significant concern across the board at, at, at schools. Um, it's no different here. Um, we, we have families of, of you know, all, all kinds that, that need these reasons. And um, we've looked at our counseling services, what we're providing. We do have Good Samaritan Health that currently comes into our, our district. They, however, are limited to a certain um, demographic that they can serve. There really are not these services around. You, you, 
you have to go to Springfield or Kettering, sometimes Circleville, Centerville, those kinds of areas to get the kind of service that some of our students need, and um, it's a real challenge. So um, some, some different things have come up, and um, one of them is the new Creations Counseling Service, and uh, Mr. Bostick and some other people participated in those discussions, and we thought we would just bring this forward to talk about it since it's, it's, it's something that's affecting everybody. So Mr. Bostick? The meeting that we went to, I don't, I don't want to go over everything I passed out. I think everybody got the, the thing that I passed out. You know, we have an opportunity, and, and Beth and Kate, I just want you, you to both know, this would be to help us out and to help you out because I know the workload that they have and what they, they deal with every day. Um, new creations, you know, will fill that gap. And um, they also have the avail availability that they can work with anybody in our schools, K to 12. And Tony, if you, is there anything you wanted to put in? I just want to keep it very basic and not take too long on it. I, I think it's important to, every principal, all of our teachers realize, as a district we, we realize there's a gap in service when it comes to mental health. We're reevaluating almost everything we do to make sure that we have certain services in place. So for instance, one of the units that we have in another building, we're looking at how to staff that differently to make sure that those kids have the supports they need in place by way of behavioral health. Um, at some point though, kids who aren't eligible for good Samaritan behavioral health still need to have a recommendation or referral to a licensed counselor. This would be a service that would be able to be potentially on our campus a couple days a week, depending on what it looks like, if we decide to move forward with, with this. And they would be able to give us basically a half, half rate price to provide that support for our kids on an ongoing basis. Additionally, and the model that the Career Center currently uses is New Creations helps identify grant funding that's out there to support this. So ultimately, it's nearly cost free. So again, we know we have gaps in providing services sometimes for kids when it comes to mental health. They, th this is an option that we're currently examining. I think that's one thing in the meeting I liked. They also have the ability to do family counseling. Parents can refer their children to go into the school, you know, for each building, and uh, they do have psychiatric services that is available to them to have, so they can work with a, a very wide range of different things that uh, students may have. And, um, you know, the cost factor, I think, was, they were saying somewhere around $55 yeah. a session per student, which, you know, and then we'd have to see what we want it to look like. Absolutely. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I think it's something that would be well worth investing in. We'll continue to examine that more closely and look at other services that are available and then report back to so this is an informational Absolutely. discussion. Absolutely. I think it's great. I think yeah. she, the more we can get of that type of service for the kids that need it is wonderful. Yeah, please continue to, we will. to explore that. Okay, I have nothing on hearing of the public on non-agenda items. Um, you've got, if you notice, we have uh, three meetings coming up. Uh, on Friday, June the 1st, there's something going on that night. Yeah, our part of it will be fairly short. <laughs> the name reading will not be. <laughs> um, it was something we want to do this year to, uh, to publicly um, recognize our graduates and approve the list of, of graduates that night. So we're going to be doing that then. On Can I add a real quick, just a couple of real notes here. I just want to congratulate um, Beth on her work. Um, the seniors this year are going to get $2,335,430 in scholarships, 29 honor cords, 44 honor diplomas, 25 presidential awards. 57% of our students are going to college, 3% to the military. So great work on, on her part for working with those students to get that, that accomplished. Very good. And the next, our next regular meeting will be June 28th, and that will be at the new board office on 215 Looney Road. Uh, we will meet at 530. We have uh, a hearing on a retire, rehire. And then our regular meeting will be at 6 o'clock. And you're, all, of course, all invited to attend. And that being, well, only I lied. It's not three hours. <laughs> Lucky us. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Have a second? Second. 
There's no further discussion. All in favor, signify by standing up. <laughs> oh, 